Pat O'Leary is a specialist in environmental and interpretation graphics. Here she talks to Think Bigger about how she realises her creative vision for her clients. Creating architectural graphics, environmental graphics or signage, where do your ideas come from? Inspiration for a project comes from all sorts of places really. Um, the first, the first, I guess the first thing is, well you, you have a client brief that you've been given almost certainly. So um, you look at the space, you look at the, there's obviously the subject matter, it's a different, every subject is different, you know, there's a story to tell and often the story, if it's a rich, you know, exciting story, it'll have visual, you know, connotations and so that's a, a often a kind of area of inspiration. The budget can have an effect on, on that as well. So there's just, there's, there's so many different things. You, you know, you, you, you've got the, the story to tell, you've got the space that it goes in, you've got the, the audience you have to kind of, um, it, it has to work for. So the, you know, the, the level of understanding whether it's going to be a very adult audience, a very family audience. So all of those things. and. I mean, designers, kind of inspiration comes from all over the place. I, I, the one thing I try not to do is look at other graphics for my inspiration. So I look at fine art, I look at nature, I look at all sorts of things, you know, and almost anything, but architecture is very inspiring to me. And just uh, the kind of the world around me, I mean, that's why it's great being in a place like this this area in London because it's kind of very rich and visual and so um, you know it comes from it comes from all sorts of places really. Can you tell us the key steps you go through on a typical commission? There's a lot of key steps it, again it, it, it depends on the size of the job how many steps but um, the first thing is it always starts with the brief the client brief um, there's almost always a kind of start-up meeting, stroke workshop where all the people who are involved in the project will get together um, and kind of have a brainstorming. It's really important to understand what the client is trying to say with their project. So talking to them, listening to them. Um, and then I go away and I look for the, you know, think about the inspirations we've sort of just discussed. I often kind of put together a set of kind of mood boards with kind of precedent images that I think kind of um, will get across the look and feel of, the, of the, the story we want to tell, the way the graphics is going to look. I try to keep my graphics really integrated so I work really closely with the, the 3D designer or the architect I hate add-on graphics, I hate graphics that looks like it's just been plonked on at the end. Um, so we kind of develop together and have a lot of discussions and back and forth about, you know, what they're going to, what the 3D designer is going to do, what I'm going to do. And then it's very important to bring the client with you all the way. Um, so there's regular meetings, discussions, you know, make the client understand. There's always compromise along the way. Um, and once the client is happy with the look and feel, then you start to get into more of the detail of the project, um, designing the specifics, where things are going to go, colours, type size, from, you know, it's very important, there's a lot of um, access issues nowadays, especially in museums, you know, type has to be a certain size, um, for legibility, all sorts of access issues. So, so, that, so there's, a, there's quite a period in the middle of sorting out all the details. Um, again, there'll be a client presentation, get the client to buy into it, approve it, and then it's on to the artwork stage um, and pricing the job as well, make sure it all fits in budget, it's very important. Um, and artworking and then installation and I always like to go on site. I like to take a project through f from start to end. Some, some graphic designers quite like the concept stage but don't like the artworking which is kind of a bit more um, kind of meticulous and tedious but I, I really enjoy doing the whole thing because it's always slightly evolving. Um, and then on site installation and and yeah, and opening day <laughs> and collapsing the heat. <laughs>
What are the typical creative and technical challenges you meet in your work? Well, there's always plenty of those. Most of the projects I do are permanent exhibitions for from, from museums. Along with that comes with durability, because if, if they have a big footfall, i.e. a lot of visitors, um, they'll get, you know, they, uh, graphics can get, especially if, it's, if people can get up close to it and touch it, they can get a, a hell of a hammering. So durability versus um, often quite a low budget. Um, you know, and the more durable something is, the more expensive it is normally. So, so that's, um, that can be quite a challenge because museum projects of generally don't have huge budgets, but they have to be bomb-proof, basically, um, especially if they're for a kind of family audience and a lot of children, a lot of hands-on activities, so things can be rubbed off and scratched and scraped. So we have to work with that. Uh, another thing with... Um, Museums, um, is, there's often a story to tell, and well, they, there's always a story to tell, and people don't really much like reading um, in a in a gallery or in a museum. So, kind of trying to get across text that's uh, presented in a kind of exciting way to invite people to read it is is always a challenge. Um, but they, they they're kind of that's part of the fun of the job as well, kind of making that work. Is there a particular job that utilised large format graphics and environmental graphics that you can talk us through? Just finished a project for English Heritage called, um, at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. Um, it's the Swiss cottage which was built for the uh, Victorian Albert's nine children where they could learn to do everyday um, activities like cooking and cleaning and gardening and household management. Um, and it's, the Swiss cottage is a grade one listed building and English Heritage wanted to tell the story of the nine children, kind of introduce the nine children to the public and te all tell they all had their own little eccentricities and characters and get those across. Um, but they didn't want to they didn't want to turn it into a museum it's sort of didactic panels on the wall space. They wanted to keep the feel of the interior, well and we did as designers as well, wanted to keep the kind of interior house kind of quality, um, domestic quality of it. So we used, and also the it, grade one listed building, we, we, we were very restrictive what we could sort of put on the walls in terms of fixings. So we wallpapered um, the graphics basically, we printed large format digital printing direct to really nice kind of textured wallpaper that was like kind of Victorian, had the kind of feel and quality of Victorian wallpaper. And on that we told the story of, the, of each of the children and what they got up to in the Swiss cottage. And it worked out really nicely. It was kept a lovely kind of domestic quality to the space. Um, and the quality of direct to media printing nowadays is so good. You know, um, that you can just do lovely things and lovely colour matching. We were to match the paints. All the, all the paint that was used was English heritage, kind of conservation paint, heritage paint colours. We were to match it really well with the direct media printing. So that was, that's a recent job finished this year. And then completely different project, because I do a lot of architectural um, projects as well. I did... Um, new signage and gates and interior entrances for a, um, a, an ex-local authority council block just around the corner from here in Hackney um, and we did, we did quite a bit of experimenting. What, what the architects would have liked would have been um, kind of vitreous enamel uh, like the old uh, tube signs but there, that's really expensive and it's a, sadly a dying art anyway, trying to find something to do it. So we experimented with um, printing onto steel. Um, so we powder coated steel and then those panels were sent to the printers, the large format printers. They printed directly onto them. Then they went back to the steel production company and they lacquered them with a high gloss lacquer. And they actually looked really beautiful and they're sort of still there. I don't know, seven, eight, eight years later, looking really good. So that was two very different projects, but there wasn't a graphic panel 
in sight, really, or a piece of paper in sight. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about the range of substrates that you use in your work? Yeah, I mean, that's the brilliant thing about um, direct-to-media printing, because when I first started in this business, if you wanted to put um, graphics on anything other than paper, it, it had to be screen printed, which was really expensive process, and just the you know locations that you were doing it brought all sorts of problems. Now you can, I mean, you can actually print onto almost anything. I've even printed onto corrugated card, you know, really, really well. So we print on glass, plastic, um, steel. I've mentioned um, stone, bronze, corian, which is a material that's used often used in kitchens but it's a really smooth kind of plastic conglomerate um, so so yes I mean and, the, and, and some printers are more reticent about um, others about printing but uh, I've got a couple of printing companies that I use regularly and I mean almost anything that I take in they'll give it a go you know? <laughs> which is really nice and try it and sometimes it doesn't work but more and more it does work you know which is great how do you find out what the options are, what's available to you in terms of new techniques or new substrates? Well, finding out about what's available is partly down to me, you know, to keep up with the changes in technology. Um, but also printers will come to me and, and sort of sell me their wares. Um, and then the companies that I know and work with regularly will, um, you know, will, will just collaborate on often when I'm starting a project and going back to the inspiration and how you know the stages if I've got an idea for something um, and I'm not sure if it'll work I'll kind of go to the printer kind of almost straight off and have a conversation with them and and some printers are more amenable to that than others and really kind of enjoy the challenge and and we kind of it almost becomes a collaborative process which is the way I like it best actually if I can you know rather than me just designing something specifying it and saying here do this you know every few weeks I get a call from a new printer um, wanting to come and see me and show me what they're doing depending on how what they sound like <laughs> and how busy I am you know I'm, I'll say come on in and we'll you know show me your wares and a lot of it will be stuff I've seen before um, and they try and make out it's different, <laughs> um, but you know it's great when somebody comes in and you know it's something completely new. Um, and just yeah, digital printing is improving all the time. So you know, but you can print beautifully onto fabric now, whereas before it used to be a really kind of low resolution and you know not very good. So it's fine um, from a distance, like huge billboard kind of graphics, you know. It's, you're kind of a long way away from it. it looks fine but in the work I do we get right up close so the quality has to be really good so yeah so it's just you know a bit of me a bit of them really who else do you work with on a typical commission it, each project comes with you know quite a large team again depending on the size of the project but there will always be because I'm the graphic designer so there will always be a three-dimensional designer ex probably an exhibition specialist there's often an architect. If it's a job, say, at the British Museum, there'll be a, at least one curator, if not two or three. Um, there'll be a, a scriptwriter or interpretation officer, so that they're the person who um, the curator always writes far too much text that maybe the public won't always understand, so the interpretation person comes in and sort of turns it into understandable English. So there's and there'll be a, there'll often be a project manager so there's quite a large team so um, there's a lot of um, give and take goes on there's often a lot of meetings but they're kind of essential really but um, there'll be if there's kind of um, AV uh, or any kind of film in the in the project there'll be AV IT specialists lighting designers very important um, so yeah quite a big range of people really and is there a secret to the collaboration being a, that, is there a secret to a way of working to ensure the collaboration is a success? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, meeting and making sure everybody understands what's going on. I mean, meetings can be really tedious and kind of a bit time-wasting sometimes, or thought to be, but you have to really do that. Um, 
uh, and give and take as well and listening to the other people so it's always a kind of you know a bit of yeah um, um, cooperation and collaboration and give and take and but there's no I mean there's uh, there's always different personalities involved so you know sometimes they, you kind of gel really well other times it's a bit more difficult when does the printer enter the creative discussion well if I have my way I'll bring them in quite early as I sort of said previously so that I'm not going ahead designing something that possibly can't be done or can't be done within the budget again always really important um, but some sometimes the printer isn't brought in until after the kind of tender stage where the job is priced um, and again it depends on the project it depends on how straightforward the graphics is if it's pretty straightforward then that's kind of fine but as I say I, I like I, I like to think of the printer as you know part of the creative team if possible what are the groups of people do you tend to work with and how do you see your portfolio of work developing over the years? Yeah, other than museums, um, I, I work with, like, quite a lot with architects doing kind of architectural graphics. So often they, um, part of an a architectural brief will be to, do, to put a kind of help with the branding. I mean, I, I'm not a branding designer by any means but um, if if a company's got a particular kind of look and feel they want that to be brought out into if they're having a new architectural interior say offices um, they want that to be kind of incorporated into the fabric of the building uh, or, or of the interior scheme so I I get approached by architects to do work like that and I'm, a, I'm actually working on a scheme at the moment again in Hackney um, part of the condition of a, a planning permission for a new housing scheme was uh, a sort of privacy screen to go on one whole facade because it was very close to the next building so I was approached by the architects to do um, large metal screens that will be fret cut or printed on depending on they, they need to have a certain amount of cutting to let air through so they want to have a, a, a that's part of the planning uh, conditions um, that, that there's a sort of what they call a kind of art a piece of artwork or art screen that'll make the the neighbors it'll be a nice thing for the neighbors to look at but it'll also kind of add privacy to the the people and the adjoining estate um, so um, I also do work I've done work for some charities for promotional work so if they want like action aid wanted to do um, in t sort of some slight kind of branding interpretation in their new offices in London so I did kind of large format graphics in there and signage stenciling onto walls um, and I'm possibly doing a project for a breast cancer campaign, similar sort of um, thing. So it, it's, it's kind of expanding this more, more and more of um, yeah, the architectural work, the um, other maybe corporate work coming in in the future as well as the museum work.